steps required to create custom dashboard for 2016. We want to build a dashboard with three sensor indicators on it, one for the gyro, one for the encoder, and one for the sonar. Start with the lab view getting started screen. Select the FRC dashboard project. We want to assign a name that we will remember and be able to find later because we're going to modify this dashboard again. Use your individual name, in this case Jim, sensor, dashboard. Click finish. I'm going to come back to this Project Explorer window again, so I drag it down a little bit out of the way. Double-click on Dashboard Main. This opens up the front panel for this uh, project, and you'll see it looks exactly like what the dashboard that we're familiar with. What we want to do is work with the code under the Window Show Block Diagram. Now we can display all the code that drives this well, window, and we're going to work in this first loop at the top. First thing we notice is there's an indicator here by itself that says gyro. Right click on it and find indicator. And you'll notice it takes us to the front panel and it shows us where the gyro is displayed. All right, let's go back to the block diagram. And what we're going to do is add some more indicators to this window. Hold down Control, left click and drag, and make extra space here at the bottom. First thing we want to do is hook up the gyro indicator. So right click, find our WPI Robotics Library. I pinned it. I'm going to go to the Dashboard Palette. I want to pick up the first read value VI, NT read value, and put that uh, icon right here. Now you'll see it says Boolean, and we know the number, the indicator is actually showing a number. The DBL stands for uh, double, double word. So we're going to pull down this pull down box, and instead of Boolean, we're going to select number. And now we're going to create a connect with a spool of wire, the numeric output nipple to the gyro indicator. On the left hand side, we need to tell it which variable we're picking up. So it's the name, right click, create a constant, and type in gyro. This is the name that's going to come from the robot itself, where they, we stored the sensor value. Click off of that, and now we've completed that particular task. The next thing we want to do is uh, add two more of these read number ver uh, icons. So left click on the NT read value, place another icon right here. Left click on the NT read value dashboard selection, place another variable here. We can close this library tab. Start with the top one. We want to change this to number. Now the output here shows numeric nipple. We want to right click and create an indicator. We're going to, because we've highlighted the text, we want to type in sonar. Capital S-O-N-A-R. On the left-hand side, where we have the name nipple, we're going to right-click, create a constant, type in sonar again. This has to be a match for the variable that we stored in the robot. All right, click off just so that it takes those two values. Come down to the second icon, read icon. Again, we want to change this to number. On the output, we want to right-click, create an indicator. 
We're going to label this encoder, capital E N C O D E R. On the left hand side of the read icon where it says name, we're going to right click, create a constant, and we're going to type in encoder, E N C O D E R. Again, this is the variable that comes from the robot, so we have to remember exactly how this is spelled. And we're starting with a capital letter and just spelling out the word. Now, just to make this look the same, let's left click, uh, let's select the encoder indicator, and then right click on it and come down and uncheck view as icon. So that makes it a smaller. Uh, display. We're going to do the same thing to the sonar. Uncheck view as icon. Okay. Everybody hang in there for a second. The next thing we want to do is make sure that these are in the position we want them on the front panel. So right click on the sonar indicator and say find indicator. It shows on the front panel now that it's put these two indicators for us down at the bottom of the screen. And you'll notice it's kind of displaced the display. So we need to be careful what we're doing here. Select. You'll notice my mouse uh, finger is pointing at the gyro. I'm going to left click on it. And as, it, as I do that, it, it shows me these pull tabs around the perimeter of the gyro display. If I, if I left click on the gyro so that it's selected, and then I move my cursor over one of these pull tabs, it turns to a double arrow. I don't know if you can see it on the uh, case, but I'm at the bottom left-hand pull tab with the double arrow. I'm going to left click and gradually move up and to the right, which decreases the size of the gyro. So now I can... I can actually move this around with the single arrow and center it. And you notice that I move my label up here. So I want to pull the label over to make sure it shows my digital display. I reduce the size of my gyro. I bring my mouse down and with the single ended arrow, select single ended arrow, left click and select on the sonar. And now I can pull its display with the label tab up to the top. Now everything is, is highlighted on the sonar variable. I've got both the label and the indicator. I'm going to come up here to the top of the display bar where it says 15 point application font. Left click, pull down to size, and I'm going to select 24. And as I do that, you notice my text on the label and the number in the indicator change size. I'm going to select the box where I just have the label by itself and double click. And you can see sonar is there, but it's hard to read. So I'm very carefully, I'm going to take the mouse inside, left click and drag. And you notice where I've left it here is I don't have the R selected. I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to left click and drag. When I get all of the letters included, I'm going to come up here to the 24-point application font selector. This is the text settings. I'm going to go down to the color tab and slide over and pick the white color on the user bar. Now as I do that and I select off, it didn't do it. I'm going to try this again. Left click and drag. Get all the letters, come up to the application, left click on color, slide down to my user bar, make sure I pick the white tab, and then once I click off of it, now my sonar's illuminate, sonar text is in white. I'm going to go through that same process with the other encoder display, left click with the small, small arrow so they are both the label and the indicator box are, in, are highlighted. I drag it up to where I want it to be. While they're still selected, I'm going to come up and change the size of the application text. Move select to 24. Now double click inside of the just the label box. 
left click and drag when I get all of the letters enclosed. Come up to my application font size, change the color down and select white. Be careful as I do that. I'll click off of it and I show my encoder color. Okay, everything looks just the way I want it. I'm going to come back down to my block diagram. I'm going to save all. Now, once it's done that, I want to leave my block diagram open, slide it down a little bit, and I want to run this window, run the, the project, and see how it looks. So, so I use my little white arrow on the front panel. You can It'll run the program and it shows me how it's going to show up. And you'll notice that everything is offset because it put in the uh, variable indicators for me down here below. So I need to make some adjustments here. Do not close it out. Go back to your front, your block diagram and abort the project. Now go to the front panel. And you can see as I scroll up, basically it moved everything up in this block and it misaligns it now. And so I got to find some way to move it down. So let's kind of, let's see what happens here. If I, if I move my crosshairs around, I've got this right hand box selected. If I come down here and left click, does it drag? No. Does it move if I pull this down a little bit? I guess what I want to try first is left click on this video block and pull it up and see what happens there. All right, so I left clicked over here on the left side and aligned these two blocks in my screen. And so I'm going to try running this again and see what happens. So I'm going to run. All right, the problem with this is I still have my tabs. My tabs are showing, but I don't have my camera indicator at the bottom. So I'm going to come back down to my block diagram, stop the project. Let's do this one more time. Pull the video down to, uh, to align it. And let's run it again. Okay, it's a little bit better. And this is where I'm going to stop because I'm going to make modifications to this dashboard later in the season but for right now I can see my tabs at the top I can see that I still have the ability to control my camera so for now there's no more I'm not going to touch this again I'm going to stop the uh, execution I'm going to save all all right again stop while you're ahead on one of these things so we're going to save all Go ahead and close out the block diagram. Leave the Project Explorer open. Just to be safe, I'm going to save all one more time. Now down on my Build Spec uh, Specification, I'm going to expand this. Right-click on the FRC dashboard and build it. I'm going to tell it OK that I want it to be optimized. Give it a couple seconds to do this. And it's going to store it in the location where the driver station can find it as the LabVIEW dashboard. So now I'm ready to close this window. Now I'm ready to test. To test, I'm going to run the dashboard. So in my case, I'm going to go out, launch the dashboard. I have to clear the uh, firewall a couple times. All right, it's brought up the driver's station. It's going to clear the firewall one more time as it looks for the dashboard. Now, sure enough, here's our dashboard that we built. I can still control my camera. I can see my tabs at the top. And my displays that I added all look good. So as I go to my settings tab, I can change between the default window dashboard. And you'll notice that it's, it didn't delete this particular window. Here's my original default dashboard. I want to make sure that as I select LabVIEW now, 
the driver's station knows to bring up the one that we just built, and sure enough, there it is. And I can tell it's the one we just built because it has the extra indicators on there, and it has everything offset a little bit with the camera controls still usable. At this point, I'm a happy camper, and this is the end of the lesson. Save all.